न्यूज सर्विसेज डिवीजन ऑफ आकाशवाणी प्रेजेंट्स नॉर्थ ईस्ट डायरी गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू दिस एडिशन ऑफ नॉर्थ ईस्ट डायरी ब्रिंगिंग यू द लेटेस्ट डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ इंडियाज अनएक्सप्लोर्ड नॉर्थ ईस्ट रीजन टुडे वी ब्रिंग यू एन इंटरव्यू विद संगीता बरुआ पिछौरती वेटरन जर्नलिस्ट एंड राइटर फ्रॉम द स्टेट ऑफ असैम we will also talk about the reopening of border hut at sabroom tripura after 3 years but for now let's go over to the whistling village of meghalaya which is chirping cheerful notes all over the country the state government is trying to promote tourism in kongtong a remote khasi village in east khasi hills which is characterized by a unique age old practice of communication through whistling this small hamlet shot to overnight prominence when prime minister modi shared a tweet about a villager whistling prime minister's name The Ministry of Tourism had nominated Kong Thong Village in 2021 for the World Tourism Organization's Best Tourism Villages Award along with two other villages in the country. The state government is coming up with a rural hospitality complex in Kong Thong Village. The tourism project in the village amounting to rupees 7.45 crore has been funded under the Mega Eco Tourism Infrastructure Development Project. government targets to complete the project within a period of 1 year tourism minister paul lingdo had announced about this project during his recent visit to kongthong village our correspondent lam frang nong spang talked to the tourism minister paul can you provide us a bit of details on the proposed 7 crore that you announced to develop the tourism in kongthong area under the megra eco tourism infrastructure development project we are ready with project for kongkam village which will come under what is known as rural hospitality complex we will be constructing an accommodation unit and amount of 7.45 crores i have made an announcement uh, when i had visited the village so the tendering process has already started and once this is complete and confident it will enhance the importance that the village already has we should be in a position to have this unit ready within the next one year or so but then that of course is subject to you know weather conditions how will the government go about to do I mean such prominent places to develop in other parts of the state yeah we have very ambitious uh, plans one is we can have these externally aided projects for example the edb asian development bank is partnering with us then we also have the ministry of tourism i have personally met the minister in charge and uh, we will also under the state budget funds have been allocated for such uh, development of tourism and um, we also are going to look for more partners because a lot of other agencies and international bodies are also interested to open tourism in Meghalaya in a huge way common word and homestay project which was seen as highlighted in this budget what about the status of this in the next 5 years of common plan certain amount of homestays across the state yes we will push this through these homestays will uh, certainly give a boost to tourism i said we have various sources of support the state budget externally aided projects ministry support and also certain other agencies which have indicated their interest in meghalaya the meghalaya government believes that the completion of this project will enhance the importance and popularity of kongthong village the government is also trying to promote rural tourism by tying up with international bodies There are keen to augment tourism in Meghalaya. This is Lamprang Nongspung for Not East Diary from AIR News Shilong.
the three days Sikkim Arts and Literature Festival themed Read and Grow concluded in Yoksam in Gaysing district on 8th May. The festival featured cultural performances including the famous mask dance, literary sessions and competitions, face and illustrative paintings and local traditional exhibits. The Sikkim Arts and Literature Festival was organized at the Kanchenjunga National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Yuksam Gazing District. Chief Patron of the festival and Sikkim Chief Minister P.S. Tamang attended the concluding ceremony in the presence of Bhanu Puraska 2022 awardee K.N. Sharma, among others. Mr. Tamang sensitized participants on the significance of the festival venue at Yuksam, which is the first capital of Sikkim and hosts the coronation site of the first monarch of Sikkim. He informed that the festival has advocated the need for preserving natural treasures and announced that it will be marked as a calendar event. The chief minister motivated students to learn from the experience at the festival. He also highlighted state government schemes and developmental works in the constituency. Mr. Tamang said that it was a proud moment for Sikkim to be ranked the fifth happiest state in the country and the second happiest state in the northeastern region. Highlights of the festival's concluding day included literary sessions on contemporary Nepali novels, Sikkim's architecture and built heritage and the Kanchenjunga National Park, and musical performances by the Kutle Khan Project and local artists at the Yuksam Helipad. With Diliram Dulal, this is Saikat Sarkar for AI News Sikkim. World Red Cross Day is celebrated every year on 8th of May. It lauded the spirit of humanitarianism and recognizes the individuals who make a difference in their communities. This year's theme was Everything We Do Comes From The Heart. To mark the occasion, Nagaland joined the world in celebrating the World Red Cross Day on May 8th. Our Kohima correspondent has filed the report. The Indian Red Cross Society, Nagaland State Branch, Kohima, celebrated the World Red Cross Day at Rajabhavan in Kohima under the theme Everything We Do Come From The Heart. Governor of Nagaland, Mr. Laga Nesant, who is also the president of the Indian Red Cross Society, Nagaland asserted that the Red Cross have been a forefront of the humanitarian services for more than 160 years, providing assistance to victims of wars, natural disasters and other emergencies and have helped to build more more resilient and sustainable communities. Red Cross Society embodies the spirit of kindness and compassion. The work of the Red Cross is truly inspiring and it serves as a powerful example of the positive impact that we can have on the world. I encourage all present there today to contribute in our own capacity for humanitarian service in the Red Cross Society so that we can build a more peaceful and sustainable community to make our world a better place to live in. On this 195th World Red Cross Day, let us celebrate the spirit of humanity and the commitment to serve others. As the founder, Jean Henry Dunant, aptly said, to help without asking whom, let us all press to support Red Cross and build a more compassionate and resilient world. World Red Cross Day serve as a reminder of the importance of humanity, compassion and solidarity in the times of crisis. It highlights the vital role played by the Red Cross and Red Crescent movement in providing humanitarian assistance and promoting humanitarian values across the globe. For Notice Diary, this is Asunyo from Kuhima. In Tripura, one of the two border hearts along the Indo-Bangla border was reopened on Tuesday, the 9th of May, after a gap of more than three years. Like other establishments, Border Heart 2 was closed down when COVID-19-induced lockdown was imposed. The Border Heart that is divided by fencing has also a meeting place for the people from both sides who have the relatives on either side of the border. Our Agarthala correspondent has more in this report. The reopening of the border heart at Sabrum in South Tripura district of the state was more than a moment of cultural amalgamation for the people of India and neighboring Bangladesh on May 9. The 150-yard zone, which is prominently called as the Zero Line, is a designated area where the vendors and buyers from India and Bangladesh residing in the radius of 5 kilometers from the border 
come to sell and buy the products. The vendors typically sell products which are high on demand from the buyers. It may be mentioned that there is a good demand for various types of fish brought from Bangladesh like the Hilsa which is most sought after from the people of Tripura as well as the bakery items of that country. Similarly, the buyers from Bangladesh prefer to purchase Horlicks, diapers for kids, chocolate products and bananas from the Indian vendors. The vendors feel that reopening of the border heart will help in giving a much needed boost to the business which was adversely impacted due to COVID-19 global pandemic. The occasion saw additional district magistrates and other officials from both sides coming together to resume the interrelationship between the small time traders. The additional district magistrates of both South Tripura and Feni on the Bangladesh side said that the border heart would not only give a thrust to the economy of the two countries but also deepen the bilateral relations between India and Bangladesh. India's border security force and the border guards of Bangladesh play an important role in facilitating the functioning of the border hearts as they have to ensure the entry and exit of vendors and buyers possessing a valid pass. Even as vendors expressed happiness with the reopening of the border heart, however, they said that more and more people should visit the market for the business to pick momentum. Kunal Shinde for Northeast Diary from Agartala. Our personality of the week is Sangeeta Barwa Pishorti, veteran journalist and writer from the state of Assam. She is in conversation with Vanita Thakur. Hello listeners, a very warm welcome to this special edition of Northeast Diary. Today we have Sangeeta Barua Pisharuti who is a weighted journalist. Uh, she has been awarded a very high and a very prestigious award. So firstly, I welcome you to the studio. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would like you to say something about the award that you have gone and my hearty congratulations for that. Thank you. Uh, this award is named after a veteran Assamese journalist uh, okay. who is no more, who was killed by militants in okay. the 1990s, Parag Kumar Das. Okay. Parag is a very brilliant student, uh, passed out of St. Stephen's College, mm-hmm. then of course uh, Delhi School of Economics. Then he went back and, you know, and uh, started a newspaper. Mm-hmm. And this was also a time in the 90s when Assam had seen insurgency, you see. Okay. And uh, so state and non-state actors uh, at war with each other, you know, okay. It was like a, and, and the common people didn't know where to look, what to do, you know. Mm-hmm. So all these things were there. It was, and so he brought out this paper and because of his journalism, he lost his life also. Okay. But he remained as a kind of an icon for the new generation mm-hmm. you know, of journalists and new for the youth. Mm-hmm. He still is, you know. I mean, like uh, several years after his death also, people still remember him as a great journalist. Okay. So, where, And this uh, award was instituted by journalist only in his name. And you cannot apply for it. Uh, you have to be nominated. Mm-hmm. So I'm very glad that they actually uh, looked Part at my you. work. Yeah. And, it. and I'm also going to be the first woman to get an award. Uh, for, okay, for, that's for lovely. That's, that's lovely. amazing. I feel yeah. that that is like, you know, so many women journalists in the Northeast, not just in Assam, but across mm-hmm. the Northeast, are in the field and for mm-hmm. quite some time. And to be picked up for that is like some extra joy. <laughs> Definitely. And that's how we thought that this is just the right time to bring you out here in the studios and discuss about it. So, you know, what I really wish to know is that earlier also you have been bestowed with number of awards. But this award definitely is something very prestigious and uh, it has given you lots of joy. Since you are from Northeast, of late you have really seen that uh, uh, government has taken lots of efforts to bring some uh, remarkable change in the scenario of Northeast. So what do you feel that uh, from the time you started your career as a journalist and now that you have graduated to this uh, level, do you feel that uh, there has been really some uh, drastic change? For the better? I will tell you, um, you know, A, is the change of perspective that has happened. If the Prime Minister keeps talking about the region, it gets noticed. Yeah, okay? true. So that's something I feel there is a difference there, at the fundamental level. Mm-hmm. And the second thing what I see is that there are a lot of these union ministers 
who keep visiting the region. Yeah, okay? That makes it even that, more. That you know, you are in the news. Yeah, okay? they get noticed. They get noticed, and also these ministers keep note, uh, keep getting space in the regional media, and that they are they are coming from New Delhi. Okay, mm-hmm. because always the distance between not just the physical but the mental distance between New Delhi and the region has yes. always been a problematic issue. Now it's not like now, that. Now you see that there is an effort, mm-hmm. very conscious effort, to you know remove that gap. Yeah, so yeah. these are the fundamental differences I see. Mm-hmm. But when you talk about what visible changes I have seen, because mm-hmm. I travel across the region in and out, and uh, what I have seen is the change in infrastructure. Okay. There are a lot of major in infrastructural projects that had awaited. You know, I mean, like that took many years, mm-hmm. and and they, they I've seen them to be completed. Now Assam uh, has the uh, country's longest um, bridge. And the longest rail come road bridge. Okay. These were projects that were started as part of the Assam Accord in the 80s, you mm-hmm. know. And uh, and but we see that completed now. Uh, you know, these are huge, humongous uh, kind of effort. So that I see the lot of inf- road development I see in Arunachal and in the border areas. You now see a lot of effort has been made to uh, uh, make roads. So this is something uh, because see it is a landlocked area. Yeah. See? So right. road is a very important thing. Mm-hmm. So that's something we see. And the uh, other thing that I also notice is that uh, th- that positivity, you know, is, yeah. is as I said. And plus the borders, you know, as particularly the Assam, because most of the states were born out of Assam. Uh-huh. So when they, uh, uh, there there were a lot of vagueness about the borders. Mm. Okay. So and then because of that, there were a lot of these fights, border skirmishes every now and then. Okay. It's been an old problem, mm-hmm. but now I see a kind of a sincere effort on the part of New Delhi. Try and see what can be done. Oh. So recently, we've seen this whole Arunachal thing. You know, there's an understanding with Arunachal and Assam governments now that two yeah. uh, entire problem is not being solved, but mm-hmm. to what could be has been done. Now, same with Meghalaya. Okay, so there's something that needs to be done. I would say that everyone should get a chance to visit Northeast as certainly. a tourist. Oh, what do you think? This has helped the tourism. It will certainly, and it has. Because see, now in today, you know, if you have to, if you want to go and stay in Shillong, hmm. those old hotels and all, there are like you, very few, you know, yeah. options. Everybody knew and all that. There are five star hotels now in Guwahati and all of that, and other places also in Shillong. Yeah. And uh, so that kind of development has happened. So there are options for people mm-hmm. to stay, and yes, we do need a lot more. But uh, of course, like you know, I mean, uh, at least something is happening. You know, yeah. so that is, and we've been able to give some option to people. Mm-hmm. Though I would say that you know, yeah, considering the region being a seismic zone, we and also there are a lot of the whole push is for natural uh, beauty and the whole uh, you know to showcase that beauty. Mm-hmm. So then there should be actually more push for ecotourism than mm-hmm. this whole five-star business. You know? correct, correct, <laughs> so. It should be something different from the general kind of tourism that you correct, get to go. Huh? Yeah. And it indeed is. Sagita, mostly the kind of stories that you cover, is it all uh, uh, entwined to uh, Northeast only or otherwise also? No, I do other stories also, but mm. my focus uh, has always been on the region. A, because I come from the region, so I have a special, you know, quite natural. Uh, uh, yes. they're, they're natural. Huh. And then the other thing is also I have felt that when I started work east, uh, in New Delhi as a journalist, I realized very few of my colleagues knew about the region, the mm. real problems and, you know, how to deal with it and all that. So, and that's also because there's hardly been any diversity in the newsrooms in New Delhi. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, there's always been mm-hmm. there. And when I joined United News of India in the in 19, mid-1990s, I was the first woman from the region to be uh, uh, appointed in their headquarters in New Delhi. Females, of mm-hmm. course. Females are coming up in a big way. This is how you choose the stories. What really attracts you when you decide that this is going to be my story? No, yeah. I always feel that as a journalist, my job is to, uh, you know, not for nothing are we called fourth estate. So my job is to stand with the people, bring to the readers and viewers the uh, the, the, the people's that, stories. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. because always, you know, our always the attention in New Delhi, what we see is, you know, uh, the, the government news. Government news is always uh, important because people need to know what is what the what the government of the day is talking about. You know what are the projects and policies and all that. But also about people. So what interests me most is is any story that is related to people. So that's the reason commoners. I commoners. That's yeah. the reason I do political stories, but also hmm. cultural stories. Okay. So 
uh, we have uh, lots to uh, inquire when it comes to northeast i mean that's the kind of uh, uh, the curiosity that we have to correct, because correct. it's so secluded it has been like that but now it's become a part of us and uh, we have been visiting frequently and uh, uh, and you have been doing lots of stories related to that so you as a woman you have lots of priorities with to your family also so the kind of balance that is required for a woman to look after her home to manage her workplace and at the same time do stories uh, which should be convincing and should be good enough to suit your caliber so how do you manage all the three i feel you know there's an inherent power within every woman to mm-hmm. be you know able to do multitasking yeah. i all, not for nothing do we have durga with ten hands yeah. you know? <laughs> i think we each of us like that mm-hmm. like to use that icon mm-hmm. and say that this is what we are comes very naturally, naturally to, you. to us okay yeah. so yes. this is how you balance everything <laughs> yes. so what are your future ventures as a journalist uh, have you any plans after receiving this prestigious award your i mean the expectations of you will rise even higher So how will you cope up with that? Yeah, then, no, that's just like you know you continue doing the work that you do. A, B, also um, I also write books. So yes. my uh, next book is coming, which is on a, a kind of a portrait of the Assamese community. Yeah, yeah. We don't have that kind of a book in English hmm. uh, uh, published by a national new, uh, uh, publisher. Okay. So Elephant is bringing it out oh, at great. the end hmm. of this year. So I'm in the process of you know the book is in the process of being edited. And so, what was the topic of your earlier book? The earlier book was again uh, interesting, uh, uh, which is like on Assam movement okay. that happened in the students' agitation that hmm. happened in the nineties. So that was brought out by Penguin India, hmm. and uh, this was again uh, first of a kind book uh, after forty years hmm. of uh, you know the students' agitation. Hmm. And when this whole NRC update process was ge- getting a lot of attention, you know, in twenty nineteen and, and uh, all. What is so actually started. the format of the book? Is it uh, in a fiction manner or no, 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 not at all. It's a, a hardcore. I okay. am a nonfiction writer. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay yeah uh-huh. so it was really a pleasure talking to you anything else that you would uh, like to advise our young journalists who are coming up and who have lots of ambitions but they you know like this instant culture that we have these days mm. they want to get the best of it but without you know putting in lots of efforts so what would you suggest them <laughs> my suggestion is like you know read others that's mm. very important not yeah. just always talk about uh-huh. your you and your coverage and your okay. stories you need mm. to read others others also that's yeah. very important mm-hmm. and also keep two feet on the ground and stand with people and tell okay. people stories thank you so much sangeeta for being with us thank you for calling me that was sangeeta barwa pishorthi journalist and writer from the state of assam in conversation with vinita thakur And now we bring you an Asmi song entitled Matu Tumi presented by Papu
Vinita Thakur with assistance from Kumar Gaurav. It was brought to you by the News Services Division of Akashwani. <laughs>